Time to get a little oil in there. Now, the Wells Index cabinet had this gallon of oil in it. And uh, this is what they said at the factory that I bought this from. They said the guy who was running this machine, this is what he was using in the one-shot oiling system. This is uh, SAE 5 Lubricating Oil 22. So, not quite sure if this is the right stuff, but it's good enough for him. It's good enough for me for now. I'm going to use my new uh, $1 flea market find oiling can. You kind of wonder how this gets lubricated. I just use one of these acid brushes to spread that oil out to an even film on the top there and a thought just occurred to me. Since there's no provisions for getting oil in there that I can see, maybe that's supposed to have a film of grease and not oil. And you know what? I'm going to feel real dumb if I put this all together and find out later I was supposed to put grease in there. I've got the PDF file download from the Wells Index Company's website, the operating and maintenance instructions for the mill. I think I better just go check. Well guys, I give up. I've just spent about 45 minutes searching online. Um, the PDF file of the owner's manual and maintenance manual for the Wells Index Model 847 uh, is actually available online in PDF format on the Vintage Machinery website uh, that was actually submitted uh, by Keith Rucker. He's uh, he's involved with that organization down there that runs that website and he's got his own channel. It's excellent. He did a review on his mill. Anyways, he's the one who uploaded that uh, that manual, so thanks to him for that being available to all of us Wells Index owners only. I just went through the entire manual, every single page, and and there's nothing in there about what to lubricate the turret with. Uh, the lubrication section doesn't even address the turret. Uh, they almost act as if it was lubricated at the factory and made to never be taken apart. <laughs> so uh, I did a search, Google search, thinking, well, maybe I could find somebody talking about it in a forum. And again, can't find anybody talking about that particular um, thing as far as turret lubrication goes so that's not that was also a dead end so then I decided well Bridgeports have turrets maybe I can uh, just find out what they use to lubricate the turrets on a Bridgeport so I found an online PDF file of a Bridgeport manual and in the lubrication section same problem they don't even talk about the turret they don't even talk about how you would lubricate it or what you would lubricate it with Hey everybody, last night the battery on the camera died, so uh, I uh, didn't uh, get to uh, video the last bit of me installing this on here, but as you can see it's no longer hooked up. I got it on, I got all the bolts in. Uh, basically it went on really easily. Um, what I did was I, I basically uh, rotated this, aligned this right over the pin, carefully loaded it to position, and things went well. Of course, as soon as I put the weight down on it, uh, that oil that I had spread all over the top of the turret here squeezed out all over the place so I had to clean that up and made kind of a mess and I think maybe when I uh, actually get to the point where I, I clamp this down tightly um, I wouldn't be surprised if a little more oil spills out or weeps out that I'll probably have to clean off but uh, so in retrospect I probably should have used uh, film of grease on there uh, but that being said it does does rotate nicely so I'm happy with the way it feels and I think we're gonna be all set as far as the turret and the ram goes I've got to uh, clean up the little the, there's a little bit of uh, light rust on some spots on the ways here on the ram and uh, a couple of spots that I missed when I was cleaning here that I'll, I'll do that uh, probably this evening if I get a chance I've also I'm going to take a shop vac and I'm going to vac out. I can see some, some swarf and some other debris right inside here. And I think actually down inside the ram there, there's probably some stuff too. 
I haven't really taken a peek down here. Flashlight. Yeah, there's some there's some junk in there. We'll get that out of there. Just run the shop vac hose down there and clean that out. All in all, that went well. Um, haven't figured out yet whether or not I'm going to be able to put the uh, head assembly on here with this crane. I think it might work out, but this is, I'm pretty much almost at the max height right here. So, uh, but anyways, I just wanted to show you that I did get this on and that, that worked out just fine. But it's uh, actually a nice day today and I've got a little bit of time off from work, so I'm going to try and do some stuff outside. So, last thing I did was get this in, so I closed the door last night, but uh, I've still got everything set up the way I left it when I quit yesterday outside, working outside, because it was getting dark. So I've got the, uh, so I've got the mini crane there on the front of the loader, and I got the chain fall, and uh, that worked out really well. I've got a narrower piece of plywood on the stairs. Uh, this time because uh, the stuff that I'm lowering down is lighter so I know I didn't need as sturdy a ramp and uh, also that gives me the little space on the side right there so I can uh, walk kind of walk up the side of the stairs get up and down as necessary so as long as I've still got this all set up I think right now what I'm going to do is um, I think I'll move so I'm going to want to get the saddle down here and uh, I might even move the head down here Ah, back in the basement working on, you know, work on putting some more of the Wells Index Mill back together. Um, the head unit is still hooked up to the crane because that's the last thing I brought down here that I used the crane for. And then the only other thing I brought down is uh, I've got the saddle down here that actually uh, was light enough. Well, <laughs> when I say light, light being a relative term when it comes to components of this index mill. I was able to uh, to slide it onto the uh, brought it over in a little wagon and uh, slid it over onto the plywood ramp and just uh, put a uh, put a tie down strap on it to use as a uh, kind of a lanyard and eased it down the ramp and got it in here. So first thing I got to do uh, is I've got to move going to move this out of the way because the plan is going to be for me to uh, plan is going to be for me to install the saddle tonight but I want to clean it first so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang it from the uh, shop crane to help me clean it and then install it on the um, over on there on the base all right I did a quick cleanup on this side so far and it's uh, coming out pretty good and then I've got some spots around here around this one shot oiler that are kind of tight to get into and there's some swarf and stuff in there so I'm just using an old toothbrush get all that out of there or most of it out I should say I can see the uh, 
now that I cleaned it up, I can clearly see there's a data plate here. So I had already identified that based on the cap here that this is a bijour, I think is how you pronounce it, or bijour, bijour. B I J U R, I think is how you spell it. One shot oiler. And from what I gathered, looking online, this company's still in business. And apparently they make replacement. Oh, here it is, right here. This is where I saw it. Uh, B I J U R, by the looks of it. But this is cracked. And uh, so I'm going to want to get that replaced. I actually toyed with the idea of maybe fixing the uh, the broken one here. I was thinking I might be able to make a patch or something epoxy it on there, but it's broken. It's not just broken on the flat here. It's broken right where this corner is, and that could make it a little bit tricky to fix. So um, I think the uh, replacement reservoirs for these are uh, about thirty dollars, but definitely be a good investment if it gets me back my one-shot oiling system. All right, this uh, seems to be pretty decent, I think. Actually, I think part of my problem is this rag is saturated. Okay, get another Clean rag. I can't remember if I use this one or not. No, this one's not as dirty. It's got to be down pretty low and underneath the table, so I don't need to get too picky about how clean this is going to look. But uh, the ways on top here, I'm definitely going to give special attention to cleaning and lubricating those and getting the flash rust off of them. Alright, I think that's good enough. The ways on the top there, I'll deal with that once I uh, have it mounted on the machine. It'll be a lot easier. The chain will be out of the way. It will be supported by the uh, elevation screw assembly. All right, so I'm going to clean up the other side the same way I did this side, and then just spin this a little bit to show you on the back. I'm going to clean out, there's a lot of swarf and junk back here. I'm going to clean that out also. You can see over there. So, I think I'll pause the camera and we'll pick this up when I'm done. Well, I started cleaning the elevation screw assembly, and I realized that going to be much better if I just took it apart partially. All I did was unscrew the screw completely and uh, I've already gotten uh, the swarf and debris that was on the top there off and I'm looking at the uh, screw here and I'm thinking what I want to do because it looks like it's actually got some grease on it um, and this is supposed to be just lubricated by oil and the problem with grease is that the swarf can stick to the grease um, there's actually a debate on one of the forums I saw regarding uh, advice the guy was seeking for a, a Bridgeport machine that he was working on. He was talking about these particular gears right here inside of a Bridgeport. I already cleaned some of the swarf off of these, but he was asking for tips on lubrication. And, and several of the uh, respondents said that they use grease in here. And uh, one of the re replies said that uh, he only uses a dry lubricant on here because he said he's seen too many instances where these gears have been prematurely worn by swarf that sticks to the grease and ends up being ground in there and causing premature wear. So uh, that being said, I think I will still grease this because this, this did look like it had grease on it. And when it's up underneath the knee there, it's one of those items that doesn't seem to be getting any lubrication from any other way that I can see. But I do want to clean this off. So, because uh, it looks like there's a lot of dirt and stuff stuck to what looks to me like grease on some of this shaft. 
and then also it's just easier for me to clean the outside of this post with it not attached to this thing. So I think I'm going to want to throw this in the parts cleaner. So I gotta go clean off the lid on the parts cleaner because right now it's acting as a workbench. All right, so last night I was down here and I uh, cleaned up in the parts cleaner. I cleaned up that uh, that screw assembly and the top part there. Give you a close up of how that cleaned up in a second. And uh, so now I just installed that uh, base part. I've got the fitting that the one shot oiler hooks up to facing the rear because I'm 90% sure that that's, that's how it is. I actually went and looked at some of the videos online of other people's mills and even the videos I had of me unloading the mill, the, the knee was so far down I couldn't see it in any of the shots. Uh, some of the video I just shot more recently of disassembly would obviously show it, but I haven't even gotten around to editing those, and, and those are those still need to be filed and everything. So uh, I'm just going to put it on this way. It, worst case scenario is if I had to, I could actually use the shop crane to support the uh, the knee and table and everything from overhead, and uh, switch the thing. You know, take the two bolts out, swivel the thing around with the weight off of it and rebolt it. It's easy enough to swap that around later if I have to. Now the uh, the screw there cleaned up really well in the parts cleaner as did this top part here. All of these gears are nice and clean now. All the swarf is gone and all of the dirt and uh, grease and everything that was on there is all gone. Now um, I had a question about lubrication on this thing because with the one shot oiler obviously oil is going to be lubricating the screw here but this screw appeared to have a lot of grease on it. Well, I still don't have a lot of answers on that definitively because lo and behold, when I looked in the manual for the mill, um, the old manual that I have, it basically calls for grease to lubricate this screw and it doesn't actually even address what's supposed to be on these bevel gears for, um, for lubrication. So, still kind of left wondering what the deal is there because I don't know if it's supposed to have grease on it and then also the oiling system is going to run, you know, uh, Vactra 2 or whatever oil I end up using in this thing. Um, or were they thinking grease it unless you have a one shot oiler and maybe the one shot oiler was a uh, not a standard item on this mill, I don't know.